Hiya, and welcome to Promises to Keep. This is our our second attempt at reading this. Because the first attempt ended with Streamlab ended with my internet going out, and then Streamlabs dies. Uh yeah, I'm aware, cats, I gave I gave you Ceiling Wolf to eat. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Please enter your name. Okay. Obviously the best name. His name shall be name. Nah. Your name will be Leo. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. We're sorry to inform you that, due to severe weather conditions, your upcoming flight has been cancelled. Please log into our website or please log into our app or website to reschedule. <laughs> Yet yeah, no. Fuck. I just laid down first all wet from the shower. Luggage packed and ready to go. I was bracing myself for a short night of sleep, but now it looks like I have no flight to wake up for tomorrow. I stare at the cancellation message, silently willing it to change into something else. It doesn't, of course. I pull myself off of my creaking mattress, reaching blindly for the suitcase I'd placed next to the bed. I unzip it and fish out my pillow and an extra blanket. I wrap it haphazardly around myself and stuff the pillow under my head, not even bothering to make the bed properly. Mm -hmm. My phone buzzes again. An email from the airline bringing another reminder of the cancellation. Yep, no escaping it now. I'm not going anywhere. I was really looking forward to leaving. After a prolonged minute of staring into nothing, I begrudgingly opened my flight app. The bright colors of the loading screen beamed down on me. I roll over onto my side and watch the wind-beaten window, that thin sheet of glass keeping the blizzard at bay. What am I doing? There's literally no point in trying to reschedule now. A snowstorm like this will put the entire city out of commission for a while. I take one last look at my phone. Low battery, 3% power. I know the feeling. I flop my arm over the side of my bed once again, pawing around for the charging cable. The phone buzzes lightly as I plug it in, and I flip over to stare once again at this window. Sleep finds me faster than I expect. At least in my dreams I'm somewhere else. Yep, guess we're gonna die. Oh my god! Oh my god! No, Mac, you're not allowed to update, cause you'll fucking die if you dare update. I can't even think about updating you, otherwise my Apple ID will get banned. Just for thinking that. I will get banned just for thinking that I can update you. Yeats mac and cheese. Oh god, mac and cheese sounds so fucking good right now. Somewhere else? Didn't you want to live here? Didn't you promise all those years ago to all those people that you'd return? Now that you're here, you can't wait to leave. Face it. You've returned, but you're not really living here. You're just waiting to die. Should I- should I turn down the redeems? Should I turn them down? I'm gonna turn them down. Same with the TTS bot, because it always scares the shit out of me. Alright, they've been turned down to negative 10 decibels. Should be good. Okay. I shiver a little. Something feels off. I poke my head out of the tightly wrapped nest of blankets. My bleary eyes take a few moments to adjust to the bright light peeking through the curtains. What time is it? I reach for my phone on the nightstand, sleepily sweeping my paw around my desk until I find it. I groan. Guess it's on the floor now. 
I begrudgingly roll over onto the edge of the bed, still somewhat protected by my covers. Fishing my phone off the ground, I tap the screen to check the time. Nothing. Could have sworn I plugged it in. I get up, still swaddled in my blankets, and stumble over to the window. I open the curtains, and... Oh my god. I had known the storm was going to be serious, but... Standing at my frost-covered window, I'm greeted by huge, looming, mountainous piles of snow. It had been ages since I had seen anything like this. Adjusting my cocoon of blankets, I reach out a paw and place it gently against the glass, feeling the chill seep into my paw pads. The view through my window was... comforting, in a way. It reminded me of childhood memories, the unparalleled excitement of a snow day and the cozy security of a warm house in cold weather. I shiver again. A warm house. I look down at my still dead phone, then back up at the snow encrusted window. My brain feels fuzzy and slow, unable to fully comprehend my situation. Wait. I turn around and sweep into the living room, my blankets trailing behind me, and walk up to the thermostat on the wall. You've got to be kidding me. I can only see my reflection staring back at me in the temperature control panel. Why do you think Igor would be a great detective? He always has a hunch. That's awful. The interface itself blank and devoid of life. See? 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 That is the worst case scenario. That is the worst case scenario. Because of the fact that... It's cold as hell, so we're gonna fucking die, and we can't even distract ourselves with our phone because it's cold as hell. And because it's cold as hell, it knocked out the electricity, which means... N which means no internet, which means... Say it with me, cats. No sexy wolf men. Also, the return of the seas. No! No! I hate it here. Same! I'm not caffeinated enough for this shit. I'm never caffeinated enough for this shit. I am never, ever, yo. He should roll on a carpet to generate electricity and then touch the nearest outlet. Yes. Yeah, uh, you need something, uh, simply swifter, I think is your username. Suddenly it strikes me just how cold I am. How cold everything is. From the air brushing my face to the floor beneath my foot paws. The power must have gone out at some point during the night. Why gay furry wolf men? Oh, Swift? Okay. Okay, I didn't know what to call you. Uh, why gay furry wolf men? Why not? Yeah, because why not? Do you prefer gay furry cat men? Because there are some pretty cute gay furry cat men. Uh, gay furry fox men? <laughs> Drayden is a good example. Forget it. Oh, then what do you like? I want I want to be able to have you feel I want I want you to be included. Oh, you don't you don't want to? Okay. The power must have gone out at some point during the night. And with it, of course, the heat. For a few long moments, I stand completely still in the center of the living room, attempting to process this turn of events. What the fuck is going on? Excuse me. 
Do you want out? Do you want out, mister? Do you want out or do you want attention? Okay, do you want out? Little fucker emerged. Alright, come on. You want out, bud? Okay, go on, be free. Live your dreams. Hi, and welcome to every single playthrough. The game that te the whatever that teaches us that I cannot go f longer than five seconds without getting sidetracked. Attempting to process this turn of events. I trudge over to my fridge and open it out of instinct, but I'm quickly reminded that I cleaned it out last night. Probably for the best. This thing is useless without power. Oh, shit. Here's audio. Took my headphones off. Defeated, I slowly walked my walked my chilled easy chair and sit, unsure of what to do without a clear way out of this mess. All I can do is start to daydream. Wonder if he's still here, enduring the storm like everyone else. Who am I kidding? I've been back here for a whole year and there's been no sign of him. Not that I've actively scoured the city for him, but I've just been so busy. Work has been so busy. Life just gone in the way and no food damn no bread does that mean no baguette this life ain't worth living life just got in the way i'm jolted out of my thoughts by the doorbell startled first standing on end a little i crane my neck trying to see the visitor through the frost caked window when that fails i finally uncurl myself from my chair and step quietly towards the door Peeking out of the people, I can see nothing, just a white haze. Must be covered with snow. I jump as a knock sounds once again right next to my head. Okay, 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 okay. How should I do his voice? No pain, no grain. Sad. Hmm. You know what, Amethyst? Can you help? Can you help me with this? Uh, describe how I should do Theo's voice. Cause I'm assuming that's Theo, and holy shit, that's a Nintendo Switch. Our boy's a gamer, and oh god, oh god. Popcorners. Oh god. He has depression. Wait, no. But, no, how should I do his voice? You know what, you know what, I'll figure it out when I see him. I'll figure it out when I see him. Hello? Anyone in there? My name's Theodore and I live down the street. Oh, no, I don't have a problem. Wait, forget what I said about popcorns. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like them. Hiya. I'm just checking to make sure you're okay. Theodore. Yes, I remember him running... Yes, I remember running into him once or twice on my on the way to work. An arctic fox, about ten-ish years older than me. Reach out a pod, open the door, then realize I'm still swaddled in blankets. Frantically shed my sheets and scramble about for a coat, cursing as I knock it on the floor. When I'm finally ready, I cautiously open the door. And the wind hits me like a truck. My fur fluffs up and I curl into my jacket, shivering. I'd expected my thick snow leopard pelt to keep me safe from the wind, but... Clearly, I was wrong. The bundled-up arctic fox stands in my doorway, paw outstretched to knock again. Gay. Gay. Hmm. If he's ten years older than the player, and the player is no doubt in his twenties or something... It's like a Cody or Max voice. Uh, what, what's wrong, Swift? What's wrong? Cody or Max? 
So, sort of like, uh, deeper. Oh. Hello, sorry for the surprise visit. Uh, Leo, right? I nod dumbly, too cold to give him a proper reply. He looks me up and down, concerned playing on his face. I'm checking up on my neighbors. I understand a lot of people lost power last night, and... He stops mid-sentence and takes a tentative step forward. Do you mind if I come in? Then we can shut the door. You look like you're freezing. I take a guilty look behind me at the state of my living room. It's, uh... It's a little messy, but... Okay. I step backward and let him shut the door behind him. Thank you, Leo. Some weather we're having, right? He gives me something between a grimace and a smile, clearly trying to lighten the mood as I shiver next to the door. He looks me up and down again. I nod once more, pulling my coat tighter around myself. I miss my blanket cocoon. How, uh... How can I help you? Well, I'm hoping I can be the one to help you. His eyes scan the room, landing on the dead thermostat and the piles of blankets on the floor. I wince internally, thinking about what a, mace, what a mess of the place is. It's looking like the whole side of the like this whole side of the street lost power. As I understand it, the snowstorm knocked over a tree, which in turn uprooted an electric pole. Oh! My ears droop. That's pretty serious. He locks eyes with mine, then his voice gentle. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I'm sorry, but it looks like most of the neighborhood will be out of power for a few days at least. A few days? Panic starts to bloom in my chest. It's already freezing my ass off and it was only going to get colder. Theodore seems to notice my alarm and gently reaches out to place upon my shoulder. I feel its warmth through my shirt, seemingly the only source of heat in the whole house. Leo, please don't worry. I'll be happy to house you until your power comes back on. That's why I'm here. His voice draws me back to the present, and I look up at him. I still have electricity in an extra room for you. With heating, of course. I'm actually housing a few other people as well. Neighbors from this side of the street. You're more than welcome to join us for however long you need. The gears start turning in my head. Before this, Theodore and I seldom spoke, and now he's offering to house me? I didn't have any reasons to be skeptical, but... I know this might sound like it's coming out of nowhere, but we haven't had a winter quite this bad in a while. Neighbors should look out for one another in times like these, right? A group of random people at another person's house. Someone I didn't really know. And the crowd we've got is pretty friendly, I promise. His tone is warm, inviting, and absolutely genuine. I take one more look at the dead thermostat and it stares back at me vacantly. Well, it seems to say, what other choice do you have? I take a deep breath and regain my voice. Okay, sure, if you don't mind, I'd love to stay at your place, at least until my power comes back. Theodore beams at me, clearly pleased. Glad to hear it. Why don't you gather some of your stuff to bring over, and let me know if you need a hand. No, I've got it covered. Give me a second. I walk briskly to my room, heart pounding. I enter my room and grab the luggage I had carefully packed yesterday. Fuck, it's so much colder in here than I realized. Trembling slightly, I take one more quick look around, slipping my dead phone and its charger into my pocket. I knew I was set on leaving this room and this house behind today, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. I exhale shakily, remembering to breathe. It had never... I had never been to Theodore's place. To be honest, we had barely spoken before this encounter. I'm not even sure I know which house is his. I begin to worry in earnest now, twisting the handle of my luggage behind my frozen paws. I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was supposed to be on a flight going far away. Hey, come on, Leo. You don't have time to mope. Or to panic. I chastise myself lightly, remembering once again to breathe. How is it so easy to forget? I look down and realize I'm still wearing last night's clothes. I should probably change real quick, especially if I'm going to be meeting new people. Oh god. Just keep moving, that's all you have to do. I take one more deep breath and release the handle of my bag. Just... Be normal. Theodore looks up from his phone as I return to the living room, glancing at my full luggage. All packed, anything you need me to carry? No, I think I've got everything I'll need, and it's just down the street. I can always come back. Fair enough. Ready to go then? I give the place one final look around. He looks back at me, cold and painfully familiar. Yeah, I think I am. Ah, I gotta think for the sub. You're the sub vocalist. Thank you. Ah.
Yeah, I think I am. Well, I'd suggest a warmer coat, and you'll definitely need snow boots. Huh? My mind's still fuzzy from the weather. I pause and look down at my clothes and back up at Theodore. Look, I've been walking around in it all day. That wind is plain nasty, and the shallowest snow drifts are thigh high at least. I know we've both got some serious winter, winter padding, but this storm is something else. Oh, of course, snow boots. I shake my head violently to clear my brain fog, but all that does is give me a headache. Right, right, sorry, let me just... Theodore flashes me a warm smile. Take your time. I putter around the messy, the messy room, collecting my thickest coat and sturdiest boots. My paws twitch slightly at how cold they are. It felt like everything in the house froze overnight. Including my brain, I guess. I quickly zip up my coat and button over the zipper, then begin struggling with the boots. There we go, that's more like it. I try to give him a smile back. Ready to go, promise this time. Oh god. Oh my god. The snow stretches out in front of me, pristine, fresh, and almost paw print free. I take a few steps, disrupting the nearly perfect sun surface with my heavy, boot-clad paws. Despite Theodore's warnings, I gasp slightly as my legs sink in past the knee, cold slush seeping into my jeans. I lift my head slightly and the snowfall seems to slow for a moment as I take in my surroundings. Oh, that is adorable! In that lingering moment, the world seems so... quiet, dampened by the hush of winter. Fat flakes dance around me on their way to the ground, piling higher and higher around my submerged boots. I resist the urge to stick my tongue out like I did as a kid, as I watch them descend. I truly can't remember the last time the city has been this silent. Snowflakes start to accumulate on my snout, on my shoulders, and on the side of my coats, sides of my coat, wherever they can find purchase. My snout starts to sting, yet my other senses feel so muffled. For a single precious second, the world seems to stop turning. All is silent, calm, and still. And then the wind picks up again, and the beautiful, beautiful, and sweet, beautiful snowfall starts to blow directly in my face and eyes. I hiss in pain and hike up the hood of my coat. The howling gusts tear at the fabric, trying to rip it off and ruffle unchallenged through my fur. Oh god, I hate when wind does that. Yeah. Yeah. No, see, here's the thing. If it's cold or raining, because I have long hair, which you already know, I have long hair, it's thick, I have long thick hair that likes to frizz. It likes to do that. And it also likes to fuck up, and my hair also likes to go along with literally any force that is being presented. Except gravity. Except gra- Fuck! Gravity. Gravity. I can't even tell stories without fucking up my words. Damn it! Gravity. Fuck. Okay. Gravity. It's like nature itself was reminding me of its preeminence. I feel the weight of my cold phone in my pocket, a victim to the wrath of the storm. Think of the plane I was supposed to board, grounded by the weather, buried like the cars on the street. <laughs> What's theta lore without a single mistake, right? I feel helpless too, taking it all in. A speck in the endless white ocean, whose tide could so easily sweep me away. I would be powerless to fight back. Then a steady paw on my shoulder pulls me out of my thoughts. Hey, you alright? He's nearly shouting over the sound of the wind. I turn to face him, blinking and shaking the snow off my face. The gusts wane slightly and I manage to get a few words out. Y yeah, I'm just... adjusting. I mean, I was born and raised here, but I don't ever remember seeing snow like this. Theodore nods. 
As far as I can remember, this is the worst it's ever been. I believe it. The cold starts to pierce through my layers, and I can feel a creeping wetness spreading underneath my socks. The aura seems to be surveying the area as well, but I get the feeling he isn't just taking in the scenery. It'll be days, I think, before they can get the plows through here, and it's obviously still piling up, so... I can hear the worry creeping into his voice as he looks up and down the street. I look past him to my car, parked in the driveway, or at least now, what I think is my car, only a vague shape is visible beneath the snow. But that's for future us to worry about. He imbues his voice with some forced cheer and starts wading through what I assume is the sidewalk. For now, let's just get to someplace warm. I'm freezing my tail off out here. He leads the way and I follow closely behind him. We walk slowly with a wide, loop-loping gait, foot paws testing for shallow spots during doing our best not to topple over. After only a few steps, I start following Theodore's trail exactly, tired of wading through the thigh-high drifts. We walk quietly, both of us devoting most of our attention to staying upright, if I wasn't really in a conversational mood anyway. For some reason, it felt wrong to talk too much out here. Winter was speaking. We could choose not to listen, but we shouldn't interrupt. After a minute or so, Theodore turns back to me and points towards a nearby house. This one's mine. I blink in surprise. It's huge! For some reason, I hadn't expected him to own the biggest house on the block. We walk up to the partially shoveled porch steps and he fishes a key ring from his coat pocket. I'll need to get give this another shovel tomorrow. People will be coming and going. He turns the key and opens the door. Both hustle in and hurriedly shut up behind us, eager to escape the chill. Oh, this is nice! The warmth in the living room is heavenly, courtesy of a robust heating system and a merrily crackling fireplace. I can feel my muscles finally begin to relax in response to the welcoming heat. I don't think I realized just how cold I had been until this moment. We're back! Theodore calls out as we enter the house, but I don't hear a response. They must be busy. Oh well, you can meet them later. He sheds his coat and holds out his paw to take mine. As I struggle to remove my snow-filled boots, I can't help but ask, um, how many others are here? A smile returns to Theodore's face. He seems to have no shortage of those. Counting you, I'm expecting five guests in total. He brushes the clinging clumps of... He brushes the clinging clumps of snow off our two coats and hangs them neatly on a nearby rack. Some of them are still gathering their things. Not too many, then. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I don't know if I could have handled something like a group of ten. Please, sit down. He gestures to a couch in front of the fire, and I readily fall into one of the seats. I resist the tempting urge to, me to immediately curl up into the warm cushions. Theodore looks me over again and continues. Anything to drink? How about some warm tea? I prepare the leaves myself. I suddenly notice how wet my pant legs are, and guiltily shift them off of the couch. Um, I think I'm good. To be honest, I kind of feel bad intruding on in the first place, so... Theodore raises an eyebrow. Now... I'm going to stop you right there. Oh, God. As long as you are staying here, what's mine is yours. I promise you there is no reason at all for you to feel bad or guilty. It's not as if the power outages are your fault. And speaking of, I felt how cold it was in your house. You must still be freezing. Please, let me bring you a warm mug of tea. Alright, you got me some hot tea. Sounds wonderful right now. Excellent. I'll be back in just a second. So you're... <laughs> yes! He is acting like a mom. He is acting like... One of my friends from high school. He is acting like his mom. And oh my god... Oh my god, because I remember, me, my sister, we'd be chilling at his house, we'd be chilling, and then, and then, we would, uh, then, uh, he would get a call from his mom, and she'd be like, hey, I'm getting McDonald's or something, uh, what, what do, what do they want? And me and my sister, we were just like, oh, nuggets, and she was like, all right, we'll be, all right, I'll be back with nuggets. And you would think, oh, oh, she would do something like just hand us the container of chicken nuggets. No. She went through the effort of getting the chicken nuggets, then portioning them out 
specifically on plates portioning out the nuggets and fries on plates i fucking miss her i miss her but granted i also i also singed part of my hair while up there so and accidentally drop kicked their fridge i feel bad about that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I singed part of my hair and accidentally drop kicked their fridge. <laughs> okay, what do you want to hear? The uh, singeing hair or the drop kicking of the fridge? You ever slip on a freshly mopped floor? Here's the thing, here's the thing. I was called, so I was running. I had to run to the dining room, and you would think, oh, I should go from this room into that room and into the dining room. I decide, I decided, hey, you know, it's a great idea. Let's run in the kitchen into the dining room. So I did that. Well, I slipped. And, uh, I had, I had slipped. Landed on my side. The side that didn't. I landed on my right side, and I have was positioned in such a way where, like, my right leg was curled, and my left leg was fully extended, and it landed directly underneath the fridge. Yeah, it wasn't actually a drop kick. I just slipped. That said, I did actually kick. That said, it. That said, I did make forceful contact on that fridge when I slipped. That's why I say drop kick. Oh, hiya. The other thing about singeing my hair, uh, I was being a dumbass. Okay, so there's like a space underneath the fridge, underneath the fridge that houses like components and whatnot. The fridge did not fall. The fridge did not fall. I was being a dumbass and uh, singed part of my hair. Found out when we could smell burning hair. Anyways, back to the story. I could be here all day be talking about how I was a dumbass. He turns, he turns and begins to walk through the kitchen. Theodore. He stops in the doorway and turns. Hmm? Thank you for all of this. It's my pleasure, and please, call me Theo. As Theo walks off to the kitchen, I remember the dead phone weighing down my pocket and begin to scan the room for an outlet. The, the living room is pretty well kept, much neater and more welcoming than my place when I still lived there. Do I still live there? I wonder where I'll be after this storm settles. I find a suitable spot near the couch and start charging my phone. I wonder if I'll have any messages, or if it'll just be updates on my cancelled flight. Just automatic, just automated text sent by a computer. Then I hear Pa steps as Theo returns to the living room. Two steaming mugs in Pa. Here, my favorite brew. White tea with chicory roots, hibiscus, coriander, and some other flavors. I think you'll like it. He holds a mug toward me as he sits, and I reach out to grab it with both paws, hungry for its warmth. Thank you. I lower my head to give the tea a sniff. It smells like... Tea. I guess I don't really know anything about tea. As I lean in for a sip, Theo slips out, slips his phone out of his pocket. Fuck. It tastes floral with hints of citrus. It's pretty good, actually. I start to give a compliment, but Theo speaks first. Do you know the raptor in number 42? I've been trying to get him to join us here, but he hasn't responded to my text. Didn't answer the door when I knocked, either. Um, not really. I mean, I don't have his number or anything. I trail off lamely, hiding my snout in my mug. A few seconds of silence pass as Theo continues typing. I'm texting a friend of his, Artemis. He's the burden number 60. The two of them are pretty close. He'll also be staying with us. I nod, trying to sip my tea as quietly as possible. It felt pretty bad to admit that I don't didn't know my neighbors as well at all. Especially when Theo has gone out of his way to be so kind to me. You know, I think I'll just head over there again. This cold isn't good for scaly folk, and, I'm, and I want to make sure he's alright. Sounds good. Do you want me to tag along? Theo takes one look at me, tail wrapped around my soaking wet pant legs, clutching my mug to my chest. No. You still need to warm up. Just stay put and I'll be back soon. 
I nod, immensely grateful. I was in no rush to charge back into the storm. Theo gets up and walks to the door, slipping on his coat again. Stay safe. And, uh... Stay safe, and, uh... I like the tea. I hold up my mug and give him a smile. Feel free to pour yourself another cup. I'll be back before you know it. The door swings shut and I'm left alone with my tea and my thoughts. After a few more sips, I feel the comfortable heat start to seep into my core, slowly spreading throughout my body. I pull my still-frozen foot paws up onto the couch and peel off my wet socks, tucking them into a side pocket of my bag. As the minutes pass, I start to subconsciously start subconsciously prepping for company, my eyes fixed on the front door, waiting for it to open. I can do this. I can be normal. They'll come in through the front door any moment now. Then I hear a door shut somewhere else in the house. I nearly jump off the couch, startled before remembering the other house guests. I just hadn't expected them, expected them to be here already. I take a deep breath, I puffed up tail switching back and forth. Oh, why am I so jumpy? I hear the gentle tap of paws coming down the flight of stairs, the sound getting louder. I sit up and prepare to meet whoever is coming, tucking my tail behind me to hide my nerves. Theo! I just got a text from Artemis saying... Then the mystery guest comes into view. Oh, he's cute! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Do we know him? He stops mid-sentence, making eye contact with me, and gasps loudly, an audible mix of shock and wonder. Leo? My heart beats even faster. Those ear and fur patterns were unmistakable. You know what? Can I make him gay? Can I make him sound as gay as possible? Do, do I have permission to make him sound as gay as possible? Give him the Monty voice without... No, not the Monty voice. I will. My heart beats even faster. Those ear and fur patterns were unmistakable. It can't be. It had to be. Rofi? My heart drops. I feel time slow down around me. The dog freezes, eyes wide. He's clearly surprised, but I can't fully read his expression. Does he have some sort of grudge against me? Honestly, I'd understand if he did, given our history. We used to be the best of friends. Little memories flit across my mind. The vibrant colors of the tree in the town square, Rofi, the tree, and I, all changing with the seasons. The smell of a playground grass during recess, freshly mown. The long nights we would spend talking and the quickening beat of my heart when we would play fight. Especially when those fights turned into sleepy cuddles. The last chocolate bar we shared before I left. Dark chocolate, bitter, with hardly any sweet. It's been over a decade since I last saw Rofi. Since my parents decided to uproot our lives and move across the country. When they broke the no news to Rofi a few days before the movers made their final trip to our place grabbing the last of our things. I just couldn't find a way to tell him without breaking his heart. Or mine. Oh, I also like dark chocolate. It's so fucking good. Dark chocolate's delicious. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. At the time, it felt like I would never It's time to drink water. And neither would It's time to drink water. After that terrible conversation, we spent our last few days trying to pretend nothing was wrong. We just couldn't bring ourselves to talk about it anymore. And then, just like that, I left. He couldn't even see me off. We chatted back and forth, back and forth a few times, long distance. Our talks grew less and less frequent until they stopped completely. He just wasn't a friend I could keep over the phone. Years passed and I forgot. Perhaps I made myself forget. That's always what I've done with painful memories. A single question settles like a lump in my throat. A childish question. A question a kid asks when they know they've done something wrong. Are you mad at me? I open my mouth to ask it, but... <gasps> Leo, really, if you! <laughs> oh, I'm going to have so much fun with this character. He's already my favorite. Unless there's a musician. Is there a musician character? If there isn't, then it's Rofi. Girl is just so happy to see him. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> the bright orange dog breaks into a sprint across the room, arms outstretched. I 
barely have time to react before he tackles me into a soft, fluffy hug. Then we both fall back onto the couch, his momentum carrying us a bit too far. I lay there for a second, dazed, and I feel him jump up from the couch. Oh, uh, sorry, it's just, it's been so long! You really are Leo, right? I didn't just hug some stranger! He really hasn't changed at all. He takes a seat next to me, eyes wide but filled with energy. Still reeling from his football tackle, I find enough air in my lungs to respond. Yeah, it's me. Leo. Wow, it really has been a while. What, like 10, 12 years? He says this incredulously, counting on his paws. The guilt rises once again to the surface. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Uh, hey, Leo, are you okay? I blink a few times, unball my stiff paws, and force myself to meet his eyes. Y yeah, sorry, it's just... It's been a while, you know? I trail off, watching his face closely for a hint of sadness. A twinge of anger, anything really. But his expression doesn't really change. To an unknowing observer, it would seem we were only apart for a weekend. It have been! But it's not to see you again, really! The genuine warmth in his voice comforts me a little. Maybe he really isn't mad. I feel the same way, really, amidst all the craziness. It's nice to see a familiar face. Knowing that we'd have to breach this topic at some point, I decide to take the leap. So, uh, speaking of, what are you doing here? I wince a little, not the smoothest segue. But he takes my question and runs with it, like the master conversationalist I remember. You'd never believe it. His voice practically drips with sarcasm. But I stayed here for all of high school and then for college at the suggestion of my parents. Oh god, Rofi's parents. Are they still... still the same? He rolls his eyes and nods. Yes. Yes, they are. So you're... still under their thumb. Rofi puffs out his chest proudly. Actually, I moved out, so not as much, I guess. My eyes widen. His parents were the extremely overbearing type. They loved keeping him in the house and would always give him shit for just asking to hang out with me on the weekends. And they were okay with that? With that, you moving out? Well, sort of. That didn't sound too convincing. There's no way they would just let him move out. Not if they were all the same pe not if they're at all they were at all the same people they were a decade ago. They uh kind of made it happen themselves, really. I notice his tone drop slightly. I open my mouth and close it again, burning with curiosity but not wanting to pry. I decide to drop it for now and let the room go quiet. Anyway, enough about that. It takes him only a moment or two to perk up. He's always had the ability to lighten a conversation, and I was always jealous of that. I'm still jealous of it. What are you doing back at this time of year? You miss me so much that, that you travel through a snowstorm to see me! I resist the urge to flinch. Best to just tell him the truth now, it'll come out eventually anyway. And actually, I've been back nearly a year. A year? Why haven't I seen you at all then? <laughs> I fold a little into myself and drop my gaze. I can tell he's surprised, not upset. Thank God, not sure I could handle an upset Rofi right now. Or ever, really. Well, you know, we just kinda... Lost touch after a while, and I figured we were both busy with school and work and all that, so... I wasn't sure how to get in touch with you anyway. My excuses were feeble at best, but Rofi remained just as chipper as ever. But you thought about me at least! Who's half the relief? God, I wasn't just a poor forgotten soul! Imagine, little old me, being lost forever in the depth of your mind. He draws out his last two words he draws out his last words dramatically, then sticks his tongue out at me. He delivers his quips with the same energy I remember from childhood. Oh god, oh god. If there is a... If there are routes, which I hope there are, uh, I imagine Rofi's route is just going to be like, you got the depressed friend... That being Leo, then you have the extrovert who adopted him, Rofi. This entire situation is glorious. He delivers his quips with the same energy I remember from childhood. With all that's happened, they would take some getting used to again. And now that I verbalized it, I guess I did think about him from time to time. Honestly, more than that, hell, I was thinking about him this morning. How could I not, given how close we'd been? I think I was putting off our meeting because I had expected it to be painful. I had expected anger, or tears, or... We really seem to be picking up where we left off. 
Well, I'm surprised I haven't seen you around then. I always go on afternoon walks and I feel like I know almost everyone who lives here. Well, uh, I don't get out that often. Oh, I bet. Let me guess. A grocery haul once a month. Hey, come on. It hurts because it's true. Damn it, Leo. Stop being relatable. I try to mumble something witty in response, but it falls flat. Mm-hmm. I'm right, aren't I? I still don't understand why you choose to stay in when your parents always let you go whenever. Well, it becomes a lot less special when you can do it any time, you know. Sir, but having that freedom beats being trapped in the house every weekend of your childhood. He was right. When we were kids, we he spent pretty much every weekend stuck upstairs in his room. Every Saturday, I'd always try to sneak him a treat through his window. I'd buy... Oh, shit. I would buy two of some new candy the mall was carrying, and we would walkie-talkie each other from across the street, critiquing our little snacks like we were on TV. He got really good at catching candy from a second-floor window. That was our Saturday night ritual. He'd always eat dinner extra fast so he'd have more time to enjoy secret dessert with me. But now, it seems like we've completely switched our house-leaving habits. How ironic. Let him be a hermit. Yes. Simpler times, huh? I don't miss them as much as you. You were probably the only thing that made it bearable back then. I can feel my face warming up. I hadn't expected such a compliment. Ha, <laughs> you're bluffing. I can't believe I see it through your fur. He reaches out to playfully poke my cheek, but I bat his paw away. More amused than annoyed. He sticks his tongue out at me again, then swishes his tail slowly. So, what did he get up to once you left? He always did have a talent for tonal whiplash. Guess that hasn't changed either. Well, nothing much. Moved to a new city, went to a new high school with new people. I bet you were super popular. Everyone here loved you. One look at his face told me that he wasn't being sarcastic. You're kidding. You were always the popular one. It wasn't a contest, and I promise we all missed you lots after you moved. I don't believe you, but anyway. My new school was really different. Way, way bigger. Even the teachers were overwhelmed by the size of our class. I mean, I guess I made a few friends, but I never really connected with anyone there. To be honest, I was counting down the days till I could move away to college. I just... Back then, I just wanted to be somewhere else. And has that changed? I pushed the thought away. And what the better college, I mean. Yeah, it was. This is going to sound cheesy, but it helped me find myself a bit, you know? Rofi's ears perk up and his smile widens. So, Leo, tell me. Who are you? He mimes a microphone and holds it up to my face. Uh. Hang on. Hang on. Let me get shit set up. I can do a gag. Let me grab the XLR cable. Let me grab the XLR cable. I can, uh... Now we're Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I can put that there, grab the microphone. Which microphone? I have two microphones on my desk and I only use one of them. So, the other microphone. Grab that, plug that in. And then let me set up the, uh, the video device capture. Set it up to use, uh, my webcam. Pull it up there uh video capture device shrink it and move it down where it is and boom here uh, uh, a microphone uh, uh, uh well the truth was that i realized i was queer that's a hell of a start Leonardo was the mute, was the <laughs> mutant ninja turtle. Oh, I fucking, I, you just reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles existence. I had completely forgotten it existed. Eh. Time to put this microphone away. Ah. 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 in heaven for boys like me. 
Well, the truth was that I realized I was queer. It's not like I really tried to keep it a secret, tried to keep it a secret anymore, but something about telling Rofi was giving me pause. Maybe the rush of old feelings and old fears. I clear my throat. Well, I figured out that I'm. <laughs> we both jump as something slams into the front door. What was that? Rofi leaps off the couch and speeds over to the door, leaning in to peer through the peephole. Oh, it's a Theo and Artemis, and a friend. The door swings open to reveal Theo, or more accurately, Theo's arms holding two huge boxes. Rofi and I back away from the door, letting him stumble into the house. He sets down the boxes near the coat rack, clearly out of breath. What is all this? As Theo catches his breath, I hear a soft, timid squeak. A scaly, crested head pops into view behind Theo's hunched form. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. That's my stuff. I wasn't sure if bringing all this was okay, but everyone insisted, and I figured that I w would want my monitor set up here if I was going to be here for a while, and I didn't really want to be a nuisance, and... The flustered dino gets caught off by another voice, silky and smooth. Hey, relax. We already said it was alright for you to bring your things. I'm going to grab Hunter to help us with these. There's no way I'm carrying them upstairs without him. As Theo steps in and starts removing his coat, the source of the velvety voice comes into view. A bird! Some kind of blue jay was my guess, but he looks like he just came from some crazy music concert. And with only a light coat draped over his shoulders. How is he not cold in that? Both the dino and the bird are holding boxes. The dino is mostly taken up by a massive computer monitor, and the bird's filled with miscellaneous items. Oh, before I forget. Leo, Rofi, this is Oliver. Theo gestures to the dino, who gives me a nervous grin. Theo then indicates the bird. And this is Artemis. The bird nods at me once, adjusting the box in his talons. Rofi, I think you and Artemis know each other already. Rofi gives Artemis a grin and a wave, and the bird responds with the slightest hint of a smile. They'll both be staying with us as we wait out the storm. It's nice to meet you both. Theo then excuses himself to grab the mysterious hunter who I still have yet to meet. Rofi moves to shut the door behind us, scooping up one of the boxes and springing up the stairs after Theo. We have guests! Artemis lets out a comical sigh. That dog has too much energy. One of these days, his treads will wear out. I clear my throat quietly, gearing up once again for small talk. So, uh, you do know Rofi then? When did you two meet? I remember him saying he texted you earlier. I moved here pretty recently, but I always see him going for walks and he usually invites me to join him. Typical dog behavior. Artemis starts to make his way to the couch as he talks, and Oliver and I follow. The bird and I both sit. Oliver gently pokes at one of the cushions with a claw, testing it, then joins us in front of the fire. Yeah, that does sound like Rofi, always looking to make friends. By the way, you're Leo, right? The same Leo he went to school with? He's mentioned you once or twice. Another twinge of guilt, though not as strong as before. After all, Rofi hadn't really seemed upset earlier. Yeah, that's me. Nice. I'm usually garbage with names, so... Apologies in advance if I forget. No worries. Um, can I just make sure I've got your names right too? I point at the Blue Jay. Artemis. Yup. And Oliver, right? The dino doesn't respond immediately. He shuffles a little in his seat, looking like he's deciding whether or not to correct me. Uh, sorry, I'm wrong, aren't I? Um, no. I can see the gears in his head turning. But, um, you can just call me Ollie, though. If you want. I just, with Theodore in the room, I guess I just wanted to introduce myself properly first, uh, rather than start with nicknames, uh, because, well, you know, he's our senior, right? I didn't want to leave it such a childish nickname. The dino loses steam as he talks, and his long-winded explanation trails off in a mumble. Artemis cocks his head inquisitively. You know he goes by Theo, right? D does he? Ollie seems genuinely surprised by this. He begins gnawing on a talon thoughtfully. And he's not that much older than we are. What is he, 30-something? He's still got a few more years before assisted living. Uh-uh! 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 He did not just say that! Mm -mm -mm. I can't help but snort at Artemis' joke. Hiding my laughter behind a paw, he gives me a small wink, amusement plain in his eyes. Really? But... He seems to have his shit together. Ollie mumbles, stuffing his claws deep into his hoodie pocket. Well, I still think Ollie is a cute name, and Theo's a chill guy. I wouldn't worry about it. 
Artemis speaks firmly, but not harshly, and Ollie nods softly in response. From the look of it, these two have known each other quite a while. Something about their dynamic feels very comfortable, very lived in. If it matters, I agree. They both look at me, Ollie in surprise, Artemis in gratitude. I'll admit, I don't know Theo that well, but I don't think he's the judgy type. He wouldn't have invited us all to stay otherwise. And I also think Ollie is a cute name. Uh, oh, um, thanks. The conversation is suddenly interrupted by two sets of paws coming down the stairs. Alright, everyone, last introduction. Theo stands aside to reveal a, to reveal a raccoon with a warm and goofy smile. He raises his paw to wave, his t-shirt rippling over a layer of bulky, well-built muscle underneath. Oh. Hmm. What should his voice be? <sighs> Look at that. Dean or Cody voice. Give him a jock voice. Yo, name's Hunter. I have a time for winter break, but... He gestures to the window. We all know how that's going. Anyway, I heard there are boxes for me to carry. I figure he was an athlete of some sort. Judging from his physique and the mention of winter break, he looks too built to just be a casual gym goer, at least. I wonder what his workout routine is for him to look like that. Artemis speaks up and... Yeah, Artemis speaks up and motions to the boxes on the floor. We just need help with these three. The other one is mine. Sweet, some to lift. Let me just... I watch him hoist two boxes up in the air effortlessly. Now come back for the screen. Don't want to damage that. I can plainly see the relief on Ollie's face. No, sorry, I didn't get y'all's names. Artemis. Oli Oliver. Ollie stops mid-word, eyes flicking to Leo and back. To Theo and back, and we're gonna stop it for the ad. Wanna break from the ads? I love these characters so much already. You can do it, Ollie! Don't let your dreams be dreams! Do you know ads dance? Cody's voice is literally Dean's voice. Yay! Ollie stops mid-word, eyes flicking to Theo and back. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Artemis raise an eyebrow. And I'm Leo. Great to meet you all. We'll be back in a sec. He follows Theo back upstairs. Each step he takes is as light and careful as when he came down. It was like the boxes didn't weigh anything to him. Did he really say, sweet, something to lift? What a guy. His tone is snarky, but not malicious. Showing off, I guess? Ollie chuckles nervously. But I mean, he was nice enough to carry all the stuff I brought, so... Gosh, I really should have left most of it behind. If I had... Ollie! Artemis interrupts him gently. Theo said it was fine, remember? And you saw how excited Hunter was to have something heavy to carry. You practically did him a favor. Ollie seems to settle slightly in his seat, his nervousness abating somewhat. Right, right, sorry. Nope. That gets a real laugh out of Ollie, showing off a mouth of razor-sharp teeth. The bird looks up from his phone and makes eye contact with me. This is a little game me and Ollie play sometimes. Whenever he apologizes unnecessarily, I just say nope. It does help, actually. Well, until I forget again. Yup, until you forget again. Don't worry, I'll keep doing it. I hear Hunter come back down the stairs without Theo this time. Hey, Ollie! Theo wants to show you to your room! I can see Ollie freeze up as he hears his nickname, but he tries his best to play it off. Uh oh coming! I'll come too. Leo, you joining us? I think I'll hang here a bit more. Might be nice to get a moment to myself. Artemis gives me a lazy thumbs up and rises from the couch. He stretches his wings out a bit, then bends over to grab his box. We'll see you later then. And just like that, the living room goes quiet again. I exhale. Remember to breathe, Leo, and settle back into the couch cushions. I hadn't really been prepared for meeting so many people in such a short time. And for reconnecting with an old friend, too. I take a moment to relish the silence, knowing it will be in short supply in the coming days. Sure enough, it isn't long before more paw steps echo in the stairwell. Here's some audio coming from a phone, followed by a familiar soft giggle. Then Rofi hops off the second to last step and comes into view. We're gonna leave off here tonight. Not goddammit.
I should not be having this much fun. I am torn between Ar- I am torn between Artemis and Rofi. I am torn. You know what? I'm going for Rofi. Rofi is my favorite here. Here, Rofi is my favorite. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.